holiday here. So today we are going to be talking about nipple shields. I'm going to show you three different types that I used um, and then I'm going to kind of bring into why we use them, how to use them, all those good tips and tricks I got for you. So the three types that I tried was I tried the Mandela which comes in a yellow case and I really, this is actually the one I continued to use. It's the only one I continued to use. As you can see that it's got the circular part and then it's got this um, unique shape right here. Um, how that works is the top tongue like this on a baby is supposed to be like this. So if the baby's eating in a cradle, you wanna do like this so that the top of the mouth is up here and the bottom is down here. Um, it has four different holes, which is nice. And I felt this one was definitely more comfortable than the other two. Um, it's very thin and flexible, super easy to put on. And that's really nice because you know, trying to put a nipple shield on in public is so stinking hard unless you're okay with showing your whole breast to everybody. So um, for me, um, I definitely leaned towards this one. I have a lot of pros. The only con is associated with all nipple shields is the fact you have to have a nipple shield on. So um, what I did is I actually bought two and I'd keep them in one case and I would bring this everywhere I went. So if I didn't have um, like a bathroom available or anything like that, I just had another clean one in the set so I didn't have to worry if this one stayed dirty, if I was gonna be out for a little bit longer. I do not have the case for this one, but actually the case for the Lanisso, I hope I'm saying that right, Lanisso, Lanisso, I'm sure you know this because they are the ones that do that lanolin nipple cream that is stinking amazing. So this one I liked, it still has an indent, it's a little bit different than the Mandela's, but it still has that where the upper um, lip goes. Um, this one also has four holes, but they're actually smaller than the Mandela's holes. Let me just grab this one. Yeah, much actually smaller, like incredibly smaller. I don't know if you can see, but it's like significantly, like they're like one third the size. And I think, I think that can be important and different depending on your circumstance. For me, um, this one worked great because I was never an overproducer. So I always had a steady stream, but I was never under, I was never over. Occasionally, um, my poor little one would choke a little bit um, if he started, but that was mainly due to him um, chomping so hard and it filling up really frequently in here. If you have nipple shields, you know what I'm talking about. This one, I guess, would work really great, maybe, if you're an overproducer and you're worried about too much milk getting to the baby at one time. Maybe that is why they would have smaller holes versus bigger holes. Um, I'll research that and I'll post in the description after I've researched why nipple shields would have smaller holes versus bigger holes. But just thinking about it, that's what I would think of. The next one that I tried like a couple times and I actually didn't really like it very much is the MAM. So when I was looking at nipple shields, this one was one of the top ones, which is why I got it. It comes in this cute little white case, super nice case, very convenient and easy. Um, and I do kind of like this shape. It's kind of like, here, let me grab this one. It's kind of like a butterfly so their, uh, their lower lip and their upper lip can touch your kind of skin and get more skin time. And it has all of these little bumps on them, which I don't think do anything. And what's also unique about it is it doesn't have holes. It has like lines, like cat eyes kind of stuff, like two slits down. Um, it'd probably be the milk transfer would probably be similar to the Mandela from the looks of the amount that could get through them both. This one I thought though was extremely uncomfortable to me, 
even getting it in my size I thought maybe it was a size issue but it's so thick like this part is flimsy kind of like the Mandela but this part right here is really thick so I'm not sh so it didn't work for me even though um, my baby is a chomper which is why I used a nipple shield um, it still was super, it was so uncomfortable to me. Um, so I only use this a few times. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that one. This might work well for someone maybe who's, um, trying to think of why someone would want this one. Um, I don't know. I don't know actually. So, um, if I find a reason why this one would be better in a certain circumstance, um, I will post that in the description um, whenever I do study it. So those are the three nipple shields I tried. As I said, Mandela was definitely my favorite. The Lanaso, I didn't like the holes. I didn't like how um, the milk came out. Um, so I wasn't a huge fan of that. It is kind of a nicer, it's kind of like a nice shape. It kind of goes in and out. But that can be, instead of like just see that, kind of goes in and out. But I still actually liked how the Mandela felt to me better. Obviously, people have different nipples. They look different. They are different sizes. So even though the Mandela worked best for me, that doesn't mean it will work best for you. Um, I do, if, I want, if you wanna have like, if you have any similarities to me, I have smaller nipples. Um, and they don't have any abnormalities. So the Mandela was great for that. So with nipple shields though, to keep in mind that they're often used for flat nipples. Um, so I don't have that, so I can't speak on what would be best for a flat nipple. My issue was more that my baby was very chompy from the beginning get go. And even I went to lactation consultants multiple times to work on positioning because that was the assumption that maybe I was having a positioning issue, but even in a great position, he still loved to just hunker down. And so my nipples ended up bleeding, super, I mean, super painful, like so painful. I was like, this has got to be worse than labor. This is really bad. So. Usually in those situations, a baby has that issue because of a tongue tie. My baby did, but it wasn't super extreme, so he didn't have to have surgery. Um, but just something to keep in mind that nipple shields, mainly for flat nipples, can be used in the situation I was, I was using them in. Um, there is a high percentage, like high, um, I think I was reading somewhere between 30 and 60% of women have... Um, a much less milk transfer when they are using a nipple shield. Um, it probably is due to stimulation and just, I mean, even though there's a few holes here, it's still different. It's still different, you know? And they can kind of grab on more, grab more tissue um, when there's not a nipple shield. So what I did, and this is what really helped me from not losing my milk is I would feed him with my nipple shields. So, okay, let me actually go back to time. So my nipples were bleeding. Oh, so painful, so bad. So I actually did for a week, no breastfeeding. We did um, finger feeding, which is the new recommendation instead of bottle feeding if you want to breastfeed. Um, that's important because babies can often get really attached to that bottle and go, heck, I'm not going back to that breast. That breast is way too hard. And then now you're, you're bottle feeding, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but that's a different topic for another conversation. I will definitely do a video on that at a later time. But so for a week we did finger feeding. And then when I finally had healed relatively enough, um, I, used a nipple shield, I fed, and then I would pump afterwards. The reason I did that is I knew I wasn't getting as much stimulation with the nipple shield, as much milk coming out. So I would feed him for a long period of time. I might be feeding him for 20, 25 minutes. And then I would also pump. And that wasn't for the baby. I honestly just stored that milk in the freezer. Um, I did that so that the lack of 
if I was not having as much of a milk transfer, that my body wouldn't um, take that information as, oh, I need to make less. No, I didn't want that to happen. So it was that stimulation I wanted to bring back in and add into my routine. And I did that for um, three or four weeks until my milk kind of stabilized, which they talk about is usually around three to four weeks. Um, and that helped a lot. I actually ended up using the nipple shield until last week. So my baby was 14 weeks old. Um, I did that because he never kind of, I would try without the nipple shield every like a few days and it would just be brutal. Um, so I um, just kept using the nipple shield. I was just honestly, y'all, I was just scared. I was like, I do not want to experience that pain again. And since my milk isn't drying up, since I'm, bre I'm pumping and he's satiated and he was gaining weight, like 88th percentile, no formula, no additives. So he was gaining like, he was gaining like a pound a week, no joke. So he was eating frequently enough. He was eating enough. So I didn't have to worry about his intake. Um, and I didn't have to worry about my output at that point. So anyway, that's pretty much my story with nipple shields. And those are the nipple shields that I used and I definitely recommend the Mandela. And that was kind of my travel journey with nipple shields. So last week I just kind of went without it and the first three times without using it, three to four times was a little bit brutal and occasionally it's hard for like 10 seconds. You know, you're just like, oh my gosh, oh, ow, 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 for like 10 seconds and then it's like a breeze, it's so nice. So. That is all I have to say about nipple shields. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, please comment below and I will try to respond as best as I can. Thank you and have a wonderful day.